So let's draw what that intermediate would look like. You always do it in two steps, right? You don't do it at the same time. First, it attacks one bromine, and then it attacks the next. Bromine. That's right. We're going to do one E2, and then we're going to do another E2 similar reaction. But E2 is concerted, right? Well, then not the other one. Well, this step is concerted. Yeah. And then we're going to do another concerted. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's right. This step. That's right. So these three arrows are all happening simultaneously. In this case, it probably doesn't make much difference. But yeah, maybe you would get full printed either way. But probably it's better not to. It's better to put in the carbons around double and triple bonds just to get a little more detail for what you're doing. That gives us this so far, and now what's going to happen? Then it's going to do it the other way around. The NH minus NH two. Now, which proton is this going to take? The now we're going to take from the left hand. Notice up here we treated this like the alpha carbon and this like the beta. But now this is the one with the leaving group. So now we're treating this like the alpha carbon and this like the beta carbon. The alpha carbon is the one that's got the leaving group. <coughs> so then we would come in like this. That frees up these electrons. And then we have this leaving group here. And that would give us this product. That's right. I already showed the first one over here. But overall, there are two NH3s. That's right. Again, in many cases, those might be left out because they're inorganic. But if you were going to show the overall reaction, you're right. If you're going to show the overall reaction, you, can, you should say that overall we're producing two ammonias. That's right. That's right. Well, it, it depends. This, all I was trying to do here was show what happened in this last step. In this particular step, I only got one ammonia. And in this step, I got one ammonia. If I was going to summarize the reaction overall, then I would say that I got two ammonias overall. Does that make any sense? Yeah. No? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, like, okay. So when you're writing it, you wouldn't write two NH3. That'd be wrong. Well, it depends how you're writing it. If you're just writing the last step, then you would simply write this one ammonia, because we only got one ammonia from this last step. We got another ammonia from this step. On the other hand, if you want to show just the overall reaction, show the whole reaction in just one equation, then you would want to show that you're getting two ammonias if you're trying to show everything. Again, in many cases, I think instructors would tend to leave this out. What we're interested in is the organic products. But uh, to be totally correct, you should show that we are producing the two ammonias here. On the other hand, the way I drew it the first time, when I was drawing the mechanism, I just showed the ammonias as they appear. First, the first ammonia appeared, and then the second ammonia appeared. Well, what's this good for in synthesis? When would we need this reaction when we're trying to synthesize an alkyne? If you think about it, what, what did we learn about first today? We learned something we can do with alkynes. We learned something we can do with alkynes, but that's useless unless we know how to make alkynes in the first place. So now we have a good way to make alkynes. What do we make alkynes out of? Adjacent dihaloalkanes. You need to have halogens on two adjacent carbons. In order to make the alkyne using this method, you need to have halogens on two adjacent carbons two halogens on two adjacent carbons. That gives us a good way to make an alkyne. And then if we wanted to, now we could put in a strong base and deprotonate this and get this to attack somebody if that's what, what we felt like. Why did we need two equivalents of base? Because we wanted to do two eliminations. That's what this number two here was representing, that we had to put in the two equivalents of base. The name for this is double elimination. That's a logical name. We had to do two eliminations here. 
you can see that a base we're using a lot for alkynes is sodium amide, NaNH2. Let's see. That probably would not be a good approach. That's right. a good question. Because it, it, it wouldn't show up the same side, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Your question was, how can you make two halogens and adjacent carbons? Radical halogenation is probably not a good approach, because how could you be sure that you would get exactly two bromines in exactly these positions? Yeah. You might only get one bromine, or you might get three bromines, or you might get two bromines on the same carbon. So radical halogenation is, radical halogenation is a good way to put in one bromine on a substituted carbon. You then have to add make it into an alkene, add Br2, and then make like a cyclic, and then add the two Brs, right? That's an excellent, yeah, that's excellent analysis. You're thinking like an organic chemist. Very good. For better or worse, you're thinking like an organic chemist. Excellent. I think that the, those, the, the last couple of steps there, I'm not quite sure if I followed those, but the general approach is right. How do we put halogens on two adjacent carbons? It's, B, it's a diatomic halogen attacking an alkene. That's one of the alkene reactions that we learned about, right? A diatomic halogen attacking an alkene, that's a good way to make sure you get halogens and adjacent carbons. Why don't we review that? Because that would be a common way that this could be put together. this synthesis problem. Let's say this is the starting material, and we want to turn it into this product over here. So I think someone had already suggested what would be a good first step. Do you also put this in CH2Cl4, or which is all that you do that in? If you, it, do you put what in? Year two and C. I, it's hard for me to remember all the solvents, but you could be right. That seems like a good solvent. I'd have to look that up. I don't remember what the common solvent is for that halogenation. You could be right about that. That seems reasonable. In any case, what should be our first step here? Elimination. Adding a Br. In a right. Manner. Before we can do any eliminations, we've got to get the halogens in. Before we can do any eliminations, we've got to get the halogens in. And how do we get those halogens in? We just do, so this is just one of our electrophilic additions where we just add a diatomic halogen to an alkene. This is one of the many, many alkene reactions that we've learned, adding a diatomic halogen to an alkene. remember what the best solvent is yeah. for this halogenation, but uh, you could be right about that. And then we can show the second bromine coming in. Make sure you remember to put the positive charge on the bromine up here. That gives us this product. 
we generally expect to get two products out of these. This is not a meso compound, so, or is it a meso compound? Yes. Ah, this is a meso compound, so we don't need to worry about getting the other product over here. Uh, in fact, it doesn't matter anyway, because you're usually going to lose the stereochemistry when you make the alkyne anyway. We don't have to be too punctilious about the stereochemistry here, because the stereochemistry is all going to disappear in the course of making the alkyne. So we can just focus on this. So everyone see how we got to this so far? All right, well, what was the whole point of doing this? Why did we do this? So now we can add the two equivalents of sodium amide in liquid ammonia solvent. And we already know what that does. That gives us the double elimination. 